Hey y'all, this is David, the Georgia photographer. Today we're going for a photo walk. I'm bringing along Sierra today and she's running the X-T3. So let's go see what we can find. Come on. Sierra was just noticing that the clumpy sign over there, that nice bright red sign would look good with someone standing, wearing, standing under it wearing red. In other words, a big strong prime color photo. And we're in the shade. <laughs> Dynamic range for the wind. Oh, I can open my eyes. Ooh, yeah. Guess who forgot sunglasses? Yeah. Guess who doesn't wear them anymore? <laughs> yeah. Who That's... that either? Oh. My own fault though. So, hey, look, look. Prime colors. You got a blue bike and a yellow bike. We're gonna get this shot. made it down here to Market Street and this is the pickle barrel. This is an iconic place that's been a part of Chattanooga for a long time. I don't know how old it is, but it's been here a long time. It needs to be uh, like tilted a little bit, but oh, yeah. <laughs> Sierra just got a picture of the logo and the end the end of curved windows. To say the windows are curved on the end. Yeah. That's one side. And that's the other. The building's triangular, for lack of a better term, and the pickle barrel sits on the point of the triangle on this end. Like a 30 degree triangle kind of shape. It fits in between two streets. Okay, we just figured out something. Oh, Sierra's God. really good at getting portraits out of people. She just stopped this girl and got her portrait. And I will insert the photo at this point. Woohoo, give me photo credit. Yeah. And, <laughs> all right, I'll put photo credit on the picture. <laughs> yeah, wait till I watermark it. Oh, no. <laughs> Sierra, great big letters, underline, <laughs> outline letters. We also realized we like Dutch tilt or tilted perspective photos. and. I, d I threw in the dad joke that it's because we're Dutch descent. <laughs> she thought that was a bad I joke. I mean, it's, it's true, but I don't think... <laughs> that's not how I it works. I don't work. think that's what... <laughs> no, but my, surely it does. Okay, we're here at the Fisher Evans building where Sierra despises their advertising and marketing. Okay, based on this, okay. What are they selling? What, what are they selling? <laughs> okay, and then more of the paper mache flowers. Okay, let's see what's across the, the doorway here. Uh-huh, no. yeah. Oh. More. Look, look at them. They're just taped to a board. What are they selling? Do they sell paper mache flowers? No, apparently they sell expensive jewelry. Uh, we'll go around to the side and see what those windows have in them. Oh, you can get you can get boxes with their name on them. Wow, those are so generic. What's in the boxes? I don't know. More boxes. Wow, what a shock. <laughs> I just... They're real good at their marketing. I didn't know it was a jewelry. Look at, store look at this. Someone told me. What is that? There's not even anything there. There's a cabinet behind the wall thing. What? Can you even go in? 
can't see inside because I've got the ND turned all the way up. Huh. Is it open? No, they have to buzz you in. Huh. Well, we ain't gonna buy it. All right, but it's a it's a bridal shop kind of slash jewelry store. It's very upscale. It's like appointment only kind of jewelry, but yeah. Their window decoration is atrocious. They need to really look into maybe updating those those pictures in the windows or something. Yeah. Something a little better. You're too exclusive. No one buys from you because they don't know you exist or what you sell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we found a couple of photos along the way. We're down here at the river now. And we got a couple of activists and got their photo. Sierra's There's a market. Again. I have a picture of the market we could put in. So. Yeah. I'm deciding that for you. Oh, I guess I guess Sierra's watermark, Sierra, no. will, <laughs> will be on her photo. And then we got one of the, like the musician in the little market, yeah. and there's a few more. I got a, got a, like an abstract of some of some colorful stuff. But yeah, we've actually had a, a pretty good um, time down here at the river. It's yeah. actually quite quite active today. There are actually people yeah. here. It's like our it's, it's like our cameras are people repellent. We'll look down like two blocks and there'll be like a big crowd of people and we'll walk down there and it's like a ghost town. No one. It's like where did they go? <laughs> <laughs> right, what? Oh it's the it's the restaurant. Oh. It's fine. Alright. Sure. Here we are at eight and broad and Right down there at Bode was a little boy in a red hat. And I, and I was telling Sierra, man, I need a 200 millimeter lens right now. And she's like, you can always have better cameras and better lenses. Working with what you got is what generates the photos. Like right now she's getting some photos with the, she's got the 56 mil on the Fuji today. So she's hobbled with a prime like me. And it's getting her to where she can see in primes and not have to have the zoom lens. She, I was going to give her the Z6 with the 24 to 70. She didn't want it. She wanted the limitation so she could learn yeah. something. So we stopped and got coffee, and she got this dope photo of this girl yeah. in the coffee shop that made her drinks for us because she had really interesting Blue eyeliner. Really interesting. Yeah. And that's not something you normally see, apparently. <laughs> apparently, it's normally black. Yep. Black or dark brown. Was it winged? Yes. So uh, that's the thing. Impressive. <laughs> I finally learned what that was about a year ago. <laughs> when I started doing makeup. Yeah, and we met that girl, what was her name? Jade at the yeah. Kennens, and she had the winged eyeliner, and you pointed it out. I remember that. Yeah. We have found that the cameras are people repellent, and the moment we round a corner, all the people scatter. Gone. So we're going to try and see if we can't get a photo. <laughs> We found a few along the way. We've had some fun. We're kind of heading back to the truck now. I got to take Sierra home so she can go do her next event. And I need to edit a video or two. <laughs> I got something to tell you about that. The files that I've done a really bonehead thing with last night. But uh, let's see if we can get some pictures. And here we are over by the public library again. There it is. See? And remember in the vlog that come out where me and Grant did our 10 mile street photography hot and I talked about that tree I don't know what it is about it but this bench with this tree just looks like it needs to have its photo taken I mean look at it well now they've got it roped off for some reason I really hope they ain't about to dig it up because it's a cute little tree display That's it is not a really hotel. the Marriott is yeah that's the TVA complex here, though. There's no way that big a building. Oh, yeah. It's a, a hotel. No, it's the Marriott, yeah. They have like 4,000 rooms in there. Yeah, pretty much. We found this blue art installation. Daddy, look, I found a feather. Oh, great. No, I, I don't have a shirt pocket. Woo! I'm just going to carry it, but it's so pretty. It's white. Uh, it's a pigeon feather. What do you it's think? It's pretty. Pigeon feather. But we ran into Randy, who's a skateboarder. I got this piece of footage of him doing his trick. That was awesome. Guess what kind of gimbal slash drone footage this is. Daddy just running like a maniac with a camera. <laughs> Shake, should have been shaky. 
Yeah. He has a nice GoPro, so it ain't. <laughs> Literally sprinting down the stairs. To, yeah. To get the Backwards. Footage. Yeah. <laughs> How did you not die? Yeah. I done it. I got the shot. <laughs> it looks cool. But. I got a picture, but it's kind of lame, so. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, look, Chattanooga Marriott downtown. Huh. <laughs> There have to be like 6,000 rooms in that thing. It's big. It's big. You're gonna want to do it. Yeah, hold on. Well, we're back and I failed to film the outro while we were in Chattanooga. I somehow forget to do that. I, I typically get in a hurry when we're wrapping up and I forget to do it when like we get back to the truck or whatever. I always, I don't know why, seem to fail to do it. So here I am doing it at home. Sierra ran the X-T3, I pulled the grip off because she wanted to operate it like a regular camera. And it actually, it runs pretty good like that. There's one. I've about got the time dialed in on this mantle clock that I fixed a month ago. I've been working on that clock. Let me just show you. I've been documenting it, just as a side note. Um, every time I make an adjustment, I write it down on this paper, okay? I'm on to the back. Every one of these is one arc slower, an arc, is I had to have a way of measuring it, so I drew the, the amount of rotation of this key on the adjustment screw as an arc of adjustment. And it basically, there's there's a little, it's a stamped sheet metal bezel, and it's got little decorations stamped in it all the way around it. And I measured basically from one of those impressions to the next as my arc of measure. And you can see I've turned it basically several full revolutions. And finally, yesterday, I made a... I made an adjustment at 1.05 p.m. And, and today, as you noticed, it's still in time with the other clock. So I may have finally got it in time. I don't have one of those little sensors that you set the beat of the clock with. You can actually get a, it's like a little microphone you hook to the clock and it will actually measure the speed of the pendulum. And you can just basically dial it in and literally in five minutes have it in beat but i don't have one of those and just to do one or two clocks it wasn't really worth it i thought i'll just document it take the key and make small adjustments until i get it in time i had it running seriously fast so i wanted to share that with you so now i've got two clocks striking at the same time what i wanted to say though about mine and sierra's trip in downtown was it was kind of interesting to see to see street photography through her eyes and to be able to understand what she wanted to get photos of because we ran similar focal lengths. So she wanted to run a prime, I said that earlier, so she could work with the limitations of the prime lens. And it was interesting to see what she would choose to photograph and how she would like interact with people to get photos of them. It was, it was kind of refreshing to go at it with a different outlook. So yeah, so if you get an opportunity to go shoot photos with someone else, whether it be a family member or a friend or whatever, go take that opportunity. It's really interesting when, when you see the perspective they bring. So yeah, so with that, I appreciate you guys watching and coming along on our little photo escapade. And until next time, get your camera out. Go take a picture with it, all right? We'll see you later. Bye-bye.